This is one of the most important championships in the world. It doesn't matter what era if you have a look at. If you take the rose-coloured spectacles off and actually look at the trees, it's always been robust and that's why it's so popular. Well, I can remember being at Donington Park with my fingers through the fence, looking in, thinking touring cars was another world. It was never going to, I was never going to get there, never going to achieve it, never learn being it, win a race or win a championship. Anyone in motorsport around the world knows what the BTCC is. This fantastic championship has evolved a lot over its 60-year history. The road cars that graced the grid in 1958 are almost unrecognisable when compared to today's purpose-built race cars. And it's that constant evolution, part of the rich history of this championship, that makes it so special. The category's roots trace back as far as 1952, but it wasn't until 1958 that the British Saloon Car Championship was officially formed. That year, Jack Sears and Tommy Sopwith finished level on points and needed a tie-break. Tommy Sopwith and Jack Sears were each given an identical 1.5 riding and told to get on with it. Two five-lap races all to themselves, changing cars in between to make it all fair and above board. Sopwith won the first race by 2.2 seconds, Sears won the second by just over four, clinching the championship. A battle royal to be fought for the British Saloon Car Championship. By 1961, the BSCC rules aligned with the European Touring Car Championship, prompting an influx of new drivers and cars. You wouldn't go for overall competition with the works cars. There were quite a few lads who had Lotus Cortinas, if you got Jim Clark or Graham Hill or John Whitmore in them, you weren't going to see him. Jack Sears, he won his championship in the Lotus Cortina. The championship, still decided on class points, often allowed smaller engine cars to succeed well into the 80s. John Cleland and Chris Hodgetts both won titles from the classes. Yes, it was great to win overall, but probably within my character, I suppose. I aspired to drive in the large capacity cars, but I thoroughly enjoyed having them over and getting get a little 600 car halfway up the grid. The championship then moved to a two-litre system and in 1991 a single class structure for the first time. Where we finished up was nothing like where we started. It was very basic. Uh, the cars were, you know, we didn't have any data in the cars and where they finished up was just, it was crazy. It was a technological arms racing really by the end of the 90s. Probably what was the height of Sir Super Tour Touring Car was 97, 8 and 9 with Williams was just remarkable. You know, my, my first test was in Harama and I had, a, I had a whole arctic of tyres just for me and I did no more than five, five laps on a set of tyres. So to be involved in all of that where there was this just massive resource was truly amazing. People look back at the 90s and think what a great era of the BTCC it was. And it was probably great for the fact that technically the cars were fantastic, the amount of money that was being spent on it and the amount of manufacturers in it. Honestly, the racing wasn't great. The racing just wasn't great. And we had to introduce artificial things in those days to promote good racing. Eventually the manufacturers were priced out of the market and in 2001 the BTC touring regulations were formed. But they didn't take off. I think the BTC regs were mega. They were, the, they were the best regs. Um, I think it didn't kick off because Super Touring had died and it was just, you know, it was a, it was a trough in the peaks and troughs of, of, of history. In many ways it's good that's gone because it makes the void between, you know, those who are got good drivers in, in, in good cars with some good people which don't have the budget and those which have everything, it, it narrows that gap and that's got to be a great thing for for the spectators and the fans of the series. In 2011, the current era of the BTCC was formed. The current regulations last another four years. At, uh, during the course of this year, we'll start looking at the new regulations uh, from 2022. And, and there's no doubt that there's an, a degree of electrification will come into it. Not full electric, but there'll be a hybrid. The history of this championship and what it's delivered to British motorsport and continues to deliver to British motorsport is something we should all be proud of.